we've been studying the Passover, okay? Uh, I would say uh, it will be maybe uh, two more weeks to cover up all this. And after Passover, we will study the first fruit and also the Pentecost and trumpet and atonement and tabernacle. There are very key crucial messages hidden inside of it. So I will teach you very slowly and step by step. Okay, after you understand all this, then, oh, it's really helping in opening our eyes. Now here, this lesson, which you already have learned, but I will, I want to go over briefly for your benefit. Okay, lecture 13 here, Passover me, a Passover feast is a, not a one-time event. It's not a one-time event. It's not just an annual one-time event. Jesus told Moses, this Passover is eternal, eternal ordinance, eternal event, eternal Commandment, eternal requirement. They say ordinance means that, okay, it's a requirement. Your rules and regulations, eternal. That's a very significant message hidden inside. Now, I just want to go over very briefly for only you and for those who are learning out of uh, a video, especially those who are in our uh, serving areas in Africa and in Himalayan areas and Indonesians and Nepalese and Bhutanese and Bangladesh, all our friends in those areas, okay, for their benefit. I want to just go over very briefly on timetable, okay? This is a very important part here. So when you teach, always teach this. Repeat and repeat. Then what is the origin of the Passover? That's the question here. Then you would say, oh, that's uh, Moses' time. When Moses was, uh, he was the one who received this commandment. Okay, this ordinance. No, it's not Moses. It was pre-designed by <clears throat> Abraham. Abraham, see, Abraham was born in 2166 BC. As you know, when he was uh, 75 years old, he arrived in land of Canaan when he was 75 years old, 2091. Okay, we already have studied that. Now, when he was in Canaan city, a city by the name of that uh, Hebron, okay, Hebron, when he was in there, in that city, Hebron, all of a sudden, Jesus appeared to him, telling him this prophecy, which is right here in Genesis 15, 13, 16. This prophecy is a dominant, dominant prophecy throughout the Bible. It's a very, very important prophecy. Okay, now, this prophecy, as you have heard that, at the time, what city he was in? Hebron. Hebron, okay. And he said this too in his uh, dream, okay, that Abraham, now you are with your wife, already a lot left to you, 
Now you only have your wife and you alone. But let me give you this prophecy. Someday, your descendants, someday your descendants, at the time, no, no child, okay, no descendant whatsoever, but he said that someday your descendant will be in slavery in a foreign country. He did not mention the exact name of the nation. Okay. Your descendant will be in slavery in a country for four generations. Four generations at the time in the Old Testament scholars calculate one generation means 100 years. Okay. One generation, 100 years. With that, four generation means 400 years in slavery. Then they will, your, those, your descendants will come back to this land, meaning the land of Canaan. That was a great prophecy. I would say one of the greatest prophecy given to Abraham. Because that prophecy has been a dominant, controlling prophecy throughout the Old Testament, the history of Israel. That prophecy, this prophecy. Okay? Often, many Christians, even pastors, missing this prophecy in their understanding of the Bible. Now, here, this prophecy was not fulfilled in his son Isaac's time. Isaac. So Isaac did not know anything about this. Now, the Isaac's son, Joseph. No, Isaac's son is who? Jacob. Jacob. Jacob, time, Jacob did not know anything about this. Jacob did not know. But Jacob had how many sons? Twelve sons. Now, out of twelve sons, eleventh son, Joseph, time. This prophecy was slowly, slowly revealed to Joseph time. To fulfill that prophecy, what was happened? Joseph's older brothers sold Joseph to Midianites. No one knew that relates to the Abrahamic that prophecy here. No one knew that. Even Joseph did not know. Even his brothers did not know. But to fulfill that prophecy, now the Holy Spirit was inspiring them to sell his young, young brother to foreign land. So Joseph was sold to Egypt here, 1898, 1898. Now, he became a prime minister, okay? Now, many said, would say this, well, wow, Joseph was a very faithful, a very uh, good man, because of that, his good nature, he became a prime minister. So let us imitate Joseph. Okay? That's kind of teachings. Yes, but what was the dominant uh, idea hidden inside? To fulfill what? To fulfill this prophecy. 
to fulfill this prophecy. It was not because of Joseph's right behavior. It was God's precise plan hidden inside. Okay, to fulfill the prophecy. Are you with me? Yeah. So he was appointed as the prime minister, prime minister of Egypt to fulfill the pro that prophecy. Now, to fulfill the prophecy, what was happened in the land of Canaan? Where his family, 70, his family lived? Famine. God used famine to deliver them down to Egypt to find food. Isn't it interesting? The famine is the one of the instruments in performing God's will. You know, even the one of the signs of the uh, second coming of Jesus, frequent famine. It's a famine is one of the instruments for God's will performed. So in order to move those 70 families down to Egypt, God used, he employed famine. Because of the famine, they went down to Egypt and it's not by chance, it's God's will. Whole family went down to Egypt with the assistance of Joseph and King Pharaoh. So first 30 years in arrival, First 30 years in the life of Egypt, they, they means Israelites, okay, were, they were treated, they have been treated very well as a royal family. Okay. But after the King Pharaoh died and Joseph died, what would happen? They became a slave for 400 years. Exact 400 years to fulfill that prophecy. Abrahamic prophecy here. So after altogether 430 years, exact 430 years, first 30 years is it's a royal treatment and 400 years slavery. Okay? When time comes, Moses was called to deliver his people. That was, that's at 1446. Moses was 80 years old at the time. Do you know that? Okay? First 40 years in, in the royal palace and second 40 years in the wilderness. So when he was in the wilderness, Jesus appeared to Moses. Okay. And said, Moses, you deliver your people. You know that? Moses denied seven times it's Moses was called, it's, 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 it's Exodus chapter 3, you know. And he denied from chapter 3 all the way to chapter 6. He denied seven times that, Lord, I cannot because... I've been away from my family, my, my, my people, and my people will not accept me as a leader because now I married 
Gentile family. And what was the, his answer? Don't worry, I will be with you. That was the key message. I will be with you. See, that applies to my life and also your life. Yeah, when he said, I will be with you, then you are 100% guaranteed. Then he was, okay, I will, I will go to King Pharaoh and asking him to deliver my people. But you know, King Pharaoh, he said, okay, Moses, Moses performed nine miracles step by step. And, but King Pharaoh said a little bit, he was a little bit afraid of that miracles. And, but his, his uh, magicians also performed the miracles. So nine miracles would not help them to deliver their people. The tenth miracle was a Passover miracle. That number ten means it's God's perfect, perfect, complete number. The Passover miracle, tenth miracle. Okay? Now here, on, he said, Make a new calendar. Remember the new calendar? What the name of the calendar? Holy calendar. Holy calendar. Okay. And Jesus told Moses, Moses, from that time on, on the day of Passover, you, you create new calendar called holy calendar. At the time was a, their, their calendar was under the civil calendar. That was a July, the July 1st. But you make the July 1st, okay, as January 1st. Okay, the new calendar started right here. And Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. We have studied that already much in detail. Now, on January 10th, under the new calendar, see, holy calendar, you go out and, and purchase or grab and prepare a lamb or lambs. It depends on size of family. And that lamb should be, the qualification is what? Male, one-year-old, unblemished. Three qualifications. Okay, you, although you know, write it down again. Always rewrite. One year old male, unblemished male. Male, one year old, unblemished lamb. Okay, and you keep it for four days for testing whether that is fully qualified or not. Qualified for the qualifications. We studied that. Okay. Then, after four days, which is uh, January 14th evening, that begins January 15th. According to a Jewish calendar, evening starts the day. So you kill the animal. Okay. And that evening and night, before dawn, you have to eat the meat, burn the meat. Any leftover, you burn it. Okay? Also, unleavened bread. And along with the bitter herbs, we all, all studied that. That is what we call, what, what the Bible says, that's a Passover meal. Okay, he said, Exodus 12, verse 8, Passover meal. Then Jesus said to Moses that this Passover meal is not one-time event. It's not just for that night. Okay, 
This is an annual event in annual event yet eternal eternal annual event. It's a forever annual event. In Exodus chapter 12 verse 8 said that is eternal forever event. This is a very crucial part here. Never skip this event. Every year when time comes, every year when January comes, you do this. Okay? Later, when Jesus came to this world, how many, how many years later? About 1,500 years later, when Jesus came to this world, he observed, he observed the task of a meal which he promised, which he commanded Moses to perform that. Now, let me repeat again. This is what? Eternal. But with this subject here, eternal, eternal ordinance, I will be teaching you in lecture 14, 15, 16, 17 today. <laughs>